Can you tell me when Iran is going to attack Israel? Are they going to retaliate because of the damage that was done to the consulate in Damascus just a few days ago? They have been threatening to retaliate not only toward Israel, but perhaps even toward America. Is Israel going to obliterate their nuclear capability? I want you to tell me your comments as we unfold this scenario of a current day and we look at the past, the present, and the future of this country, Iran. Have you ever done a Bible study on this subject? Welcome for joining tonight, and until that day, the team says greetings and appreciate your prayers as we pray for you. Let us know how we can pray for you. Let's get right in our study. You'll notice on the screen there is all three, Israel, Iran, and United States. At the present time, you're well aware of the fact of the conflict that's going on in the Middle East. Will there ever be peace in the Middle East? There will not be peace until the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes and sets up his millennial kingdom. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? Are you serving him? This is a follow-up on the video the Lord had us to do concerning Damascus destruction. And this is relevant to current events and our modern day. Now, have you ever studied the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49? We're going to look at that. Grab your Bibles. And let's get into our study for just a little while. And may the Lord speak to us concerning God's plan for Iran. God's plan for Iran, past, present, future. By the way, I hope you have uh, discovered God's plan for you, that we would love Him and serve Him. And we know some things that are crystal clear in the Bible concerning God's plan. To give Him thanks and everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Are you finding yourself like me at times having to say, Lord, I don't want to complain. I don't want to whine. I want to shine. We know it's the Lord's will that all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Although all will not be saved because our Lord said clearly that wide and broad is the gate that leads to destruction and many will choose therein. Straight and narrow is the gate that leads to everlasting life and few there be that find it. Matthew, that is in this Sermon on the Mount. Let's get in our study. God's plan for Iran. First, the past. Secondly, the present. Third, the future. And as we look at this together, you'll notice the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, excuse me, chapter 49, verses 1 through 39. We'll integrate other passages of Scripture along the way. Let's get into this. Iran's past. Where did Iran begin? I want you to pay attention to the screen here as I've studied and put this together and I appreciate your prayers, asking for the anointing and uh, please call a friend and we appreciate the uh, comments again. I keep saying that because I read every one of them although I'm not able to personally respond to them but I read them and then we certainly uh, thank you for interacting. Here is Elam. Notice this is a geographical map of Iran. And this particular place, Elam, is a strategic place mentioned in the Bible. I thought I'd help you to see like me. I want to visibly see what we're talking about. You can see Ter Tehran. That is the capital of Iran. I like to refer to it as I was thinking and praying about this today. Instead of saying Iran, how about Aran, Exxon, and uh, Chevron? You get the picture, don't you? Anyway, this Iran is uh, partnered and is in coalition with Russia. And by the way, they're supplying Russia with drones and various weapons as Russia is in war with Ukraine. In addition, with Russia's partnership and China's partnership, you have Iran, and with the BRICS establishment, we'll leave it at that, but uh, look at this Elam. Now, you'll notice we're talking about Iran's past. 
Daniel was able to interpret the King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Remember, Daniel purposed in his heart he would not defile himself with the king's meat or the king's wine. Daniel, although he was thousands of miles, almost 900 or so miles away from his home, he had, drew out of his bag of convictions. Are you purposing in your heart? See, Daniel also lived a life of moral purity, although he came up under the king's authority, and he interpreted this dream Nebuchadnezzar had. Meanwhile, the interpretation revealed four world empires that were to come, Babylonian, Persian, Grecian, and Rome, and then futuristic, the uh, ten tolls representative of what I believe to be the revived Roman Empire, and inside of those ten toes would come the little toe or the horn. That would be the ten king federation. That's futuristic. But let's go back to this Persia, which is another name for Iran. We're talking about Iran's past. Babylonian kingdom came in power. And they ruled until, uh, as we mentioned here, the year was 605 B.C. Actually, it says 606 when the Babylonians invaded the southern kingdom of Judah, which had already, Israel had been invaded, the northern kingdom in 722 by the Assyrians. But this would be the world-dominant empire. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the mighty king. However, the unthinkable, the impregnable Babylon fell to her knees described in Daniel chapter 5. The Persians were told, diverted the river, and were able to go up under this mighty fortress of Babylon. And that very night, as the king was having a drunken party, uh, he was not able to read the handwriting of the wall where God said, your days are numbered. Daniel did read them, though. And that very night, the Medo-Persian Empire overtook and that was 536 B.C. Now, when you say the Medo-Persian, the Iranians, as it were, there are several books that come to mind in the Bible, one of which was Ezra. This king named Cyrus allowed 50,000 Jews to go back to their homeland to rebuild. Uh, that had been destroyed in the year 586 B.C., uh, the Jerusalem had been burned. Nehemiah came back to rebuild the walls in 444 B.C. And he was the cupbearer of the king uh, of this Medo-Persian empire. But then the Grecian empire overtook the Medo-Persian empire under the great general, commander, Alexander the Great, who was one of the world's perhaps greatest uh, generals the world's ever known. You can read about his conquest for in the book of Zechariah chapter 9 and how he conquered the known world, although I didn't know if he ever conquered his own eternal destiny. It is said that he made the statement he wanted his hands to be left open when he died uh, as if to say, I'll take nothing with me to heaven. I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. I just came from a man's home. His mom died just a few hours ago. And the scripture says, it's appointed a man wants to die, but after this is judgment, I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. Prepare to meet your God. And Alexander went out of eternity. And I know that we one day will, if you're a Christian, to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Let's move further then. We come from Israel's past, and now we come to Israel's present. Just hitting some highlights. In Israel's present, we'll see right here the map that shows Damascus where the Israeli armies attacked and one of their key generals, Iranian in the Republican Guards, uh, a really general who was overseeing a lot of the proxies who include, by the way, the Houthis and the Hezbollah terroristic groups along with Hamas, which is now in battle and war with Israel. Hamas being in the southern part of Israel and along with these other terroristic groups, this general was killed along, I think, a total of seven. And this is the 
perhaps the straw that's going to break the camel's back. And so we'll see how the Iranians retaliate because of this attack. So here's the present. Now the Iranians, meanwhile, are shooting missiles into the Golan Heights. We were there in the Golan Heights just a few years ago. This is a military strategic stronghold for Israel. You're able to see uh, mountains in all different directions. But the point being, Israel's present. We come to the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, let me go back to the book of Jeremiah, and here's what the Lord says. Now, there are those today that tell us that Jeremiah chapter 49 the totality of the writing of Jeremiah, who was also uh, in, during this time of captivity, these events have not fully been fulfilled. Jeremiah, can I summarize chapter 49, would include the destruction of Ammon. Secondly, the destruction of uh, Edom, which would be the Edomites. You can see our video on that in regards to uh, Esau, the Edomite, Edomites, that was the descendants of Esau, according to Genesis 36, and where they relocated, namely to Petra or Mount Seir, which would be modern-day Petra in Jordan area. So the destruction of Edom. Now, I just might add, if you look at the other videos, you'll know that Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. The Edomites, God pronounces judgment on them in the book of Obadiah. It's a little book, just one chapter, but because of their Edom's uh, participating in the destruction of the temple, and as I said, 586 B.C., God says he will destroy the Edomites, and in addition to Ezekiel 35. But in this same chapter, Jeremiah 49, there's a, another nation that's going to be destroyed, and guess who it is? Damascus. I'm looking, just briefly summarizing from chapter 49, verse 23, concerning Damascus, uh, that uh, this is also, you can see another one of our videos, for the sake of time, concerning Isaiah chapter 17, the destruction of Damascus, how God said he's going to destroy uh, this uh, place. And yet the main nation that's listed here that I want to refer to and share with you is the nation of Elam, which would be Iran. I showed you a map a minute ago about Iran and where Elam would be located in Iran. And so listen to the word of the Lord and this present day description. Some say it's been fulfilled. Others say no, it's yet to be fulfilled. And you can see if Iran retaliates uh, because of Israel's uh, bombing, then Israel could very likely take out Iran's nuclear capability. Many speculate that right now Iran has the capability and their nuclear plants would certainly be taken out. Uh, if that be the case, the, I believe it was uh, John Bolton and others who years ago noted that this radiation would be released throughout uh, that place and other places and create havoc on the human race. Listen to the word of the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 49. Jeremiah is called by the Lord. God said, I knew you. I formed you in your mother's womb, ordained you to be a prophet. But Jeremiah's condition was sinful, chapter 5, chapter 6. He was confined, but he was committed. And he uh, suffered immensely, but he was true to the word of God. And he even got a word from the Lord that God would restore uh, Judah, the southern kingdom. Now, in Jeremiah 49, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet against Elam. And in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. Now, if you've got a bow and an arrow, you know, if a bow is broken, it won't shoot arrows. So it looks like that God seems to be saying he's going to break, the, and of course, the uh, Edomites 
and the Elamites, should I say, were known for uh, their uh, weaponry. But God says he was going to break the bow of Elam. And so uh, let me go further and read the text. Uh, he says, Elam will I bring the I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and I will scatter them toward all those winds and there shall be no nation where the outcast of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before the enemies and before them that seek their life and I will bring evil upon them. Even my fierce anger, saith the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam. I will set my throne, said the Lord, in Elam. Did you hear that? I will set my throne in Elam. <laughs> oh, God's in control. He's on his throne. Things are moving according to his will. It looks like it's out of control. You can trust him. You can put your life and let him take control. Jesus, take control. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in anxiety. We don't have to live um, not knowing, even though we don't know what the future holds. We know who holds the future. I talked with a young man last uh, few nights ago, and he said he was angry and bitter toward a family member. And I asked him to put something in his hand. I said, hold it. And he held it for about five minutes, and his arm was getting heavy. And I said, now let it go. And he let it go. And he said, I get it. Let it go. Let it go. Let God take control. And so listen to what else the Word of God says. I will set my throne in Elam. I will destroy from thence the king and princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Many say in Persia now there's a great revival. I don't know that to be the case. I have read excerpts about it. But God says he's going to bring uh, a restoration. When? When he comes to rule and reign, our Lord Jesus. So now we've looked at Israel's past, a brief synopsis. Now we're uh, going to the present, what it, where Iran is right now. Iran's past, Iran's present, and Iran's future. Let's talk about the future. What does the future hold? Here is listed as Persia. In Ezekiel 38, there's no doubt about it, and I believe this to be after the rapture of the church. Persia, along with this will be the Gog and Magog War, Ezekiel 38, after the snatching away of the bride of Christ. I believe personally that you know, if Jeremiah is yet to be fulfilled, that it'll happen more than likely during the tribulation time, perhaps before this time, uh, because uh, Persia, Iran, will coalition and align with Gog Magog, which is Russia, Gog Magog, and Meshach Tubal Tagarma, which should be the modern day Turkey, and Iran, which is Persia, that's Ezekiel 38.5, along with these other nations, Ethiopia, Libya, Sudan, and these other nations, the kings of the east, will eventually march over to the Euphrates River. So this is Iran's future. But look what's going to happen. Now we have a bigger picture of this last battle where the kings of the east will merge. This is more of Ezekiel 38. You'll notice Iran, which would be modern-day uh, Iran, which would be considered Persia in the book of Ezekiel, uh, this Bible prophecy uh, several thousand years ago, 2,600 or so. And so you can see these countries that will indeed, invade, they will attack and invade Israel only to be intercepted by Almighty God, and five, six of the armies will be broken. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. It'll be dinner time of peace and safety when the Antichrist makes a pseudo-peace plan with Israel, and yet the Lord is in control. Things are going according to God's plan. Yes, they'll verge in the Valley of Megiddo, which is the battle of all battles, Armageddon. This will be after, I believe, the Ezekiel 38 battle and even the destruction of Elam in Jeremiah 49. And This, you can see the West Bank, or otherwise known as Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, all of this will take place in this particular place called the Valley of Jezreel. And so now we've talked about God's plan for Iran, past, present, and future. What's God's plan for you? He's got a plan for you. 
You're not a mistake. You're not just a happenstance. We're not just here on earth as coincidental. No, the Lord is a mighty supreme God who created heaven and earth, and he's got a purpose for you and me to fulfill our purpose, to be witnesses, to love him, to serve him, and to make a difference while we can. And I want to pray with you now. Please leave your comments. Let's pray for each other as we serve the Lord. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, that's your first and most pressing need. Call upon him. Trust in him. He died. He rose again. And he forgives our sin through his own precious, cleansing, redeeming blood. And I thank him. I owe him my life. And I want to pray with you as we serve a risen Savior, resurrected Lord, and soon coming bridegroom, and then King of Kings. Father, thank you for the time together. I bless you for those joining us. I bless you, Father, for your plan and purpose for the things we share today. Although we're not in control, you're in control. We want you to take control of our mind, our will, our emotions. Help us to Keep focused on your plan for us. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for our nation, for nations, and the salvation of many men, women, boys, and girls. I pray for the church, the Christians. You'll strengthen us, Lord. Encourage us to keep fighting the good fight of faith until one day we see you face to face. Until then, we just pray you'll help us to keep looking up and marching forward and changing lives with your word and by your Holy Spirit. Save the lost, revive the saved, and we'll praise you throughout eternity because you're worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Leave a comment. God bless you, and God be with you till we meet again.